Hi, my parents, the Reverend Lawson Jolly, formerly a minister at Calvary Baptist Church in Clearwater. My mother, a proud Clearwater Tornado alum. So welcome. I was born in Dunedin. When I went to Washington, I did so with nothing more than the love of my parents. And I did so because I'm the type of Republican that believes in the equality of opportunity. We didn't come from means. I was a preacher's kid who followed my dream to work in public policy. And what happened to me was a moment of providence. I met a man that changed my life forever, and that man was Bill Young. And for nearly 20 years, for ne nearly 20 years, I had the opportunity to work alongside Congressman Young serving this community, both here in Pinellas County and in Washington, alongside him as he worked on issues like beach renourishment, supporting our veterans, supporting our seniors, infrastructure, and as he worked to ban the offshore oil drilling in our Gulf. Now let's talk politics because that's why we're here and that's why we enjoy Tiger Bay. Some polls, we haven't done any head-to-head -head polls, but if you believe the head-to-head -head polls, we are leading this primary. I believe we're leading this primary because first and foremost, I'm a Bill Young Republican that believes in working with everybody. Republicans, independents, Democrats, that, how, that is how we're going to win this race. But I also believe we're leading because we're an unconventional candidate. When Mr. Young passed away, there were a lot of great community leaders receiving phone calls. Mayor Baker was one of them. We all know what a great leader he is, and I appreciate his support. The sheriff was receiving phone calls as well. My phone wasn't ringing. <laughs> nobody called me. Nobody would have said that today we would be standing here in this election, but we are. And I believe what's working is that I like to talk about the truth. I like to talk about issues. I don't believe in poll-tested one-line attacks that are simply done to fund mail businesses. I believe in the issues. So, Tigers, let's talk about the issues. You're going to hear throughout this race that I'm a lobbyist. I'm a Pinellas County businessman. I work in finance in Clearwater. I have a communications firm. I run a nonprofit management firm. I have a consulting business. And yes, for some of my clients, I have been a registered lobbyist. And I'm proud of the work that I have done for my clients. As a result of my work, I was able to bring funding to the U.S. Marshals to track and apprehend absconders from the sex offender registry. I was able to work on growing small businesses here in Pinellas County, bringing jobs to companies that were having trouble working with the federal government. And I was proud to advance medical research for wounded warriors with amputations. That is the type of work I've done for this community, and we're going to talk about that every single day. I wear it as a badge of honor. So I'm proud of my record fighting for Pinellas. I'm proud of my record working alongside Bill Young. This race is going to be about substance, not about attacks. This, issue is, this race is going to be about taking on issues, not taking on each other. And this race is going to be about qualifications. We are all here running for a job. And what I am asking this community to do is to consider who is the most qualified candidate to step into the Congressional District 13 seat that was left vacant by our late dear Congressman and be able to affect the people of this community and the needs of this community on day one. This is a job application process. I got into this race because I believe with humility that I am the candidate most qualified on day one to step in and serve the people of this county. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. I'm not sure we've had a question yet to win the Fang and Claw Award, so I'm expecting it to be during the next four minutes. Thank you, David. We will now have our question and answer period. And David, you get to choose your questions. How about right here at this table? Right here. I'm Amy Osias, and I'm from Tiger Bay in Tampa. And I've heard a couple of you now talk about how important it is to have feet groups in Pinellas County. And while I understand that the state might have some unique issues, I wonder, other than bringing home the bank in which any congressman or congressperson would want to do. What are the issues that make it important to be in Dallas when you're going to work for our country as uh, Congress? That's a great question. Thank you. And I think that's a question that is, uh, speaks to the unique qualifications of somebody from Pinellas County. Kathleen mentioned the flood insurance issue. That is a crisis that is worsening every day. There's another local issue. We all know the legacy Mr. Young left with our military here. There are jobs here on the line. As a result of him leaving, we have uh, companies in the high tech, the manufacturing, and the defense industry that have to consider whether or not they stay in Pinellas County. 
About six years ago, anticipating Mr. Young's eventual retirement, I led an effort to start a Chamber of Commerce organization. We brought together 60 different companies in the defense and high-tech arena, from the largest uh, prime contractors nationally to the small two-person precision machine shop in Clearwater. And the idea was, let's build an economic base here that can be sustained when the political leadership changes eventually. That's a critical issue. That's jobs. And when we talk about my work in private practice, I like to talk about my work with the job, the job base here because that's critical for this community. Yes. Hi, good afternoon, Renee Flowers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, question, women are still paid about 70 cents on the dollar, and even though we see that the minimum wage is increasing somewhat, it still is not considered a living wage because we still have people working as working poor. What are you planning to do so that we don't have working poor, we just have working men and women? That's a, that's a great question. I agree with you. What we're talking about there, again, is the equality of opportunity, right? The fastest way to improve the lives of everybody, from the skilled worker to the unskilled worker, from men to women, is to create an economy that grows. As we have a conversation about the disparity in income, we often find ourselves having that conversation during economic downturns when everybody's hurting. Those that make the least, they hurt the most in those times. When economic times are good, we rarely have those conversations. If you consider the mid-2000s, the economy was great, and that sea lifted everybody, including those making the most and including those making the least. I believe in the private sector. And that is simply a, a tenet of my foundational belief about government. I'm very wary of government interference in the private sector. Uh, I also believe we do have to pay close attention to the safety net. And so that is an issue that I assure you I would pay, pay close attention to. Yes. Come on. Is this the fang and claw? So, so. <laughs> Jerry Evans. Mr. Jolly, welcome back to our club. I believe you served on my board. I do. Um, so thank you for coming. But you just indicated that it's an equal opportunity. Um, Ms. Flowers was talking about equal pay and ERA, which has been in Congress for se since the 1970s and hasn't passed. So I'm curious as to how that's worse in a recession time than it is any other time. We're talking about disparity of income, right? I mean, let's... Right? Clearly, wage discrimination is and should be illegal. Discri discrimination on gender and a whole host of issues is and should be illegal. It's that simple. Next question. Todd. Oh, closing remarks. Listen, I, I go back to the closing remarks. This is about job qualifications. Somebody is going to be elected on March 11th, and that person is going to go to Washington and be responsible for serving this community. Nobody is going to replace Bill Young, but his shadow is going to cast a long legacy across this race. And the most important thing we can do for our community is to elect somebody that knows how to affect this community, impact the people of Pinellas County, and actually get things done in the position for which we are all seeking elected office. I ask you to consider that qualification when you go to the polls. Thank you very much for letting me be here today.